During the winter months, two species of pelicans live in South Florida, the ubiquitous brown pelican and the migratory American white pelican. On inland lakes, you may find a few brown pelicans swimming alongside their larger cousins in pursuit of fish. What they have in common, however, is not particularly interesting. It is how they differ that's intriguing. With essentially the same equipment, a long bill and pouch, the two species make their living by using dramatically different fishing techniques. In the following three-part series, I explore the fascinating foraging behavior of these living dinosaurs. In shallow waters of Sarasota Bay, Dr. Jesse Williams and I videotape brown pelicans twisting and turning in mid-air before plunging headfirst into the water. A split second before contact, the neck straightens and the wings fold back over the body. Some observers have noted that the head is also turned upside down just before impact. After a successful dive, the head is slowly lifted to drain water from the pouch before swallowing any captured fish. Logically, an increase in speed upon impact should increase the depth a bird can dive. Not necessarily, as a pelican's large wings prevents a diver from becoming totally submerged. Apparently, flying high has less to do with reaching deep prey than gaining an advantage point to scan for schools of fish near the surface. Unlike diving terns and kingfishers, brown pelicans do not spear their prey nor does the pouch immediately inflate upon impact, an event that would most likely injure a pelican. Instead, the pouch remains closed while entering the water until the forward momentum is nearly spent. Only then is the beak open to allow nearby fish to be sucked into the predator's expanding net. Brown pelicans will also gather to feed on fish scraps thrown overboard by fishing boats and local bait shops. Interaction between competing birds are not, however, particularly amicable, nor do the birds coordinate their efforts. In other circumstances, the rules of engagement change, at least among a pair we filmed forging along a seawall. Flying no higher than a few meters above the water, the pelican's movements were precisely synchronized as though performing an intricate dance. When one bird took off, the second bird immediately followed, when one bird dove, its companion hit the water seconds later. What are the birds doing? Does the choreographed maneuvers increase forging efficiency? Given that the same pelican always took off first, and the follower was an adult in full natural plumage, suggests that a male is courting a young female. As the saying goes, mimicry is the highest form of flattery. After watching the birds for some time, it became clear that brown pelicans have a propensity to copy each other's movements. Why is this? Is it possible that birds dive in tandem in order to catch fish that have been scattered by other pelicans? None of the pelicans, however, scooped fish out of the water while floating on the surface, a method used by their larger cousin. Is this because brown pelicans are too weak to swing an open pouch underwater? Or have they simply lost the instinct to do so once they have perfected the skill of diving? Indeed, the relatively small stature of brown pelicans allow them to exploit a resource that would otherwise be unavailable to them. Most certainly, they would be ill-equipped to live in a marine environment without the ability to bombard their prey from the air. Yet diving can damage the body, particularly a pelican's eyes. Presumably, the heavier bird is, the greater the forces experienced upon impact, which begs the question, is there an upper size limit beyond which a pelican can grow and still dive for fish? Part 2 of this series continues to explore how these remarkable birds make a living.